Um, you guys want to start with some questions? I think we're up through 3-5, homework-wise. There are some toughies in there, so I'm sure that there's uh, probably got something. Although I know some of us are just kind of getting our stuff out. So, Blake? Uh, can you do, um, sorry, it's okay. Number 33, 12. Okay. Okay. So this is a, just says take the derivative or find the derivative or whatever. Um, so this is just a chain rule problem, right? So my f of x is like 2 to the x. And then my g of x would be like sine of pi x and I know that I need a, to do a chain rule for sine of pi x also but like that's an easy enough chain rule that I don't think it's worth like defining another function to like go in and just do it there um so this is going to be f prime of, of uh yes that's the way I would read it If not, it's just like sine pi is just a number. It's just zero. Yeah. So it's just x times yeah, zero. So that's zero. And then two to the zero is one. So the derivative is just zero. So I'm going to assume that it's not supposed to be like it's supposed to be sine of pi x. Um, all right. So how do I, what's the derivative of two to the x? Based on the homework quizzes that I graded, most of us don't know this. It's like the, it's like the, it's like the natural log two of, yeah. Yeah, it's two to the x times the natural log of two. I don't think that x should be x. So a lot of product rules, yeah, or power rules. And then the derivative of g is going to be cosine times the derivative of pi x, which is just pi. We needed to, we needed to do the chain rule here. So we have the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. We didn't write a separate ex like composition for it because it was a pretty easy chain. Um, didn't feel like it was going to be worth it, but you could have if you wanted to. Jack? So for the exponential one, you just keep whatever is the exponent. Like, you just, like for the sine of x, you just keep that exponent. Yeah, so the derivative of a to the x is just a to the x natural log a. Oh, okay. So it like it's just like e to the x, just the exponential part doesn't say the same or just stays the same, okay. and then times the natural log or whatever the base was. In the case of the natural log, in the case of e to the x, it's just the natural log of e, which is one. So that's why it just doesn't co come up on those e to the x's. Right. I want to remind you guys again that I made that Quizlet for you guys with the derivative rules on it. So if you haven't been studying that, you might want to spend some time with it. Um, so who's next? Luke? 44 from 3.5? Sure. So 
So it says, show by implicit differentiation that the tangent to the lips, yada, 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 at the point, yada, 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 is this, okay? Um, so we have a, if we're looking for a tangent, we need two things. We need slope and we need a point. The point we have, because it's given to us. So how do I get the slope at a point? The derivative. So we're just going to go ahead and take the derivative of both sides of this equation. I'm going to use like the prime notation for the derivative. I find that notation is often more convenient when you're doing implicit. But you could just you could use the ddx's. That's okay too. Means the same thing. Um, so this is just going to be like one over a squared the derivative of x squared plus 1 over b squared, the derivative of y squared, and then the derivative of 1 is just equal. They're constants. Mm -hmm. So wait, so how can you assume that those are constants for x and y? <laughs> uh, because it's the equation for an ellipse, like it's a figure. So there's only two variables if you're going to graph like a line. It says it's an ellipse, right? So what's an ellipse look Wait, like? So what's an ellipse? Like, it's like, um, it's like no, a stretched out circle, yeah. So there's only oh, and then there's two. Only... Yeah, there's just two variables. There's an x and a y because it's just a bunch of x, y's. Oh. So the a and b's are just constants. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that makes sense. Sure. No problem. Um, so the derivative of x squared is just... 2x, the derivative of y squared is 2y times y prime. Everybody's okay there? So we'll subtract the, um, let's just write this this way, the 2x over a squared over. And then we'll multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So that's going to give me negative b squared x over a squared y. So my slope at the point x naught y naught then is going to be b squared x naught oops, negative b squared x naught over a squared y naught so there's my slope and then I use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 so y minus y naught is equal to negative b squared x naught over a squared y naught times x minus x naught. So where am I trying to get to here? Oh, so they wrote this as a standard form bugger. Okay, that's fine. Um, so we'll go and uh, distribute this guy through then and I'm going to add the y naught over Okay, with that, I'm going to get the x's and y's on the same side. Okay. 
And then let's clear the fraction. That one, oh yeah, that one did dis did a dissip. There should be plus y not over here. Thanks, brother. Okay. And thank you, yeah, it is a lot to keep track of. And then we have to, okay, I need an a squared under the x's and a b squared under the y's. So I'm just going to divide both sides by a squared, b squared. So that's going to give me x naught x over a squared plus y not y over b squared and that's going to equal x not squared over a squared plus y not squared over b squared and if you look at that what is that That's the original equation with a point from the ellipse plugged in. So it's just going to be 1. And now I have exactly what I was looking for. Woof. Thanks for catching that missing why not. That would have been tough to uh, to have figured out where I, where I lost that at. I said I was going to add it over, and then I just forgot to write it down. I don't even know how to add subtract at this point. Jack? Uh, actually, your question. OK. Are we, Luke, this was yours, right? Yeah. You okay? Yeah, I just, I forgot that A squared, B squared were constants. Oh, sure. Yeah. And then it made a royal mess out of it when you're trying to do yeah, like product and quotient and all kinds of like goof and getting like all kinds of extra derivatives and. Yeah. yeah. So then I came up with something. Yeah. Yep. Fair, 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 fair. Um, in general, for like an implicit differentiation problem, unless I expressly tell you that the variables are representing something else, x and y are variables, everything else would be a constant. I think that's a pretty fair assumption. Um, who's next? Happy to do some more. I know that this, these were some toughies in these sections. So, uh, Jack? Uh, number 19, please. On 3.5? Three, three, okay. Let's see. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. So again, we're just doing implicit differentiation here. And I'm going to use the prime notations again. So we're going to do the derivative of both sides. On the left-hand side, to do the derivative of e to the y times cosine of x, what do I have to use? Product rule. Yeah. So I have e to the y times cosine x, the derivative, plus cosine x times the derivative of e to the y. 
okay? And then to take the derivative of one plus sine xy, I can just distribute that derivative. Everybody's okay? okay. Uh, so the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, great. And the derivative of e to the y is times y prime, very good. So you need a kind of a chain rule thing there because the variable that you're differentiating with respect to is different than the variable in the expression. And then the derivative of sine xy Uh, it's going to be a chain rule, and inside of that chain rule is a product rule. Yeah, so it's going to be cosine of xy times x times the derivative of y plus y times the derivative of x. And then the derivative of y is just 1 times y prime. I'm not going to write the 1. And the derivative of x is just 1. So far, so good. I'm going to go ahead and try to get the y primes by themselves now. So the calculus at this point is done. The rest of this is just algebra. Um, So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute the expression on the right-hand side. God bless you. So I'm going to move the stuff with the y primes onto one side and everything without a y prime onto the other side. I can factor off the y prime now. And then divide both sides by that quantity. That's probably as good as I can hope to do there. What you guys think of that one? Yeah. Especially like if you're not 100% on the derivative rules where you really have to think through. Like I'm automatic on most of these, so it just takes like no time, which helps. But like where you're at when you're still kind of also trying to learn the derivative rules, they're, they're tough. They're tough. They're time consuming for sure. It takes a lot of concentration to like not make sure you lose track of where you're at in the problem and what you're trying to do. Uh, Blake. Um, this isn't a whole question, but I was wondering if you'd be able to see your cases. Uh, I have one person that still needs to make them up, but if you wanted to come back during community time, I'd be happy to show it to you and let you look at it. Thank you. Sure, no problem. And um, if you actually have a whole question, sure. Do you know the 71 on uh, equal 5? Sure. 71. Those are some deep cuts there. And this 
this lovely little fella ran onto two pages. So I have like a little extra bonus piece down there. Let's get that out of there. All right. The Van der Waals equation for n moles of a gas is yada, 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 uh, where P is pressure, V is volume, T is the temperature of the gas. The constant R is the universal gas constant, and A and B are positive constants that are characteristic of a particular gas. If T remains constant, use the implicit differentiation to find dV dP. Okay, and then find the rate of change of volume with respect to pressure of one mole of carbon dioxide at a volume of 10 liters and a pressure of 2.5 atmosphere. Use A equals yada, 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 and B equals yada, yada, yada. Okay. So first up is going to be dealing with that derivative. And here I think I will use the, um, like the DDX notation. Since I'm doing DDP to both sides, right? Okay, what are the variables in this problem? Uh, yeah. yeah, pressure and volume. So if I'm looking at this, the right hand side is just zero. And what do you guys think? Is it worth? Foiling this out or just doing a product rule here? I think maybe just doing the product rule, the foil looks like it's going to get pretty yucky. But you could do either one. It's not unreasonable. And it might have been a good time saver to, uh, to elect to do the foil there. I'm not sure. Right? We're going to, I guess we'll find out together. I can't tell just on sight whether that would be a good idea or not. Everybody's good so far? Okay. So if I look at this first piece, what's the derivative of V going to be? What's the derivative of V? dV dP. And what's the derivative of N minus B? Or, I'm sorry, of negative N times B? That's zero. Told us those were constants. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not so bad, Mr. Kulik. Okay. Uh, so then we'll go to the next piece. The derivative of P is DDP of P is 1. And then here, I'm going to think about this as N squared A V to the negative 2 because I don't want to muck around with a quotient rule on something that I don't really need to do a quotient rule on since n and a are constants. So the derivative then of uh, n squared a v to the negative 2 with respect to p is negative 2 n squared a v to the negative 3 dv dp 
and then it's all still equal to zero. N is a constant. That's Yep. Yep. Exactly. It's a constant, right? So if I have ddp of n squared a v to the negative 2, that's going to be n squared a ddp of v to the negative 2. Uh, no, the constant gets pulled out, right? I'm not taking the derivative of a constant. I'm taking like the derivative of 2x. Oh, yeah. Right? It's the same idea. Does that feel okay? Yeah. So again, it's just like making sure you're looking at it the right way. And it's like, oh yeah, of course it's got to be that way. And the constants, like where you have constants that are letters like this, it's, it's tough seeing it the right way, right? You have a lot of distraction going on because you have all these extra letters that you're used to thinking of as variables. They're not variables. They're just like numbers, 2, 3, 7, 12, whatever. Okay, uh, so at this point, I think we're, I have to just FOIL this stuff out now, which is kind of crummy at this point. I wish I had elected to FOIL in the beginning. You know what I mean? So let's see, we're going to have P times dv dp plus n squared a v squared times dv, well, this is stupid, Mr. Gulick, don't do that. Let's just call it dv dp times this stuff, right? There's no sense in multiplying that out. I'll just worry about it over here. And this part, though, we do end up having to FOIL. So let's see. v times 1 is v, and then v times this stuff is going to be negative 2n squared a v to the negative 2 dv dp. And then I'm going to have a minus nb. And then we'll have plus 2 n squared a b v to the negative 3 dv dp over there because the v oh and to the third uh yeah it should be thank you and you know what mr kulik this is a dumb way of writing it also let's not do this that way right All I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, so I'm going to have like 1 times this stuff, and then I'm going to have 2n squared av to the negative 3 dv dp times this stuff. Yeah, sure. I just distributed the quantity instead of distributing the single term, right? And that's going to be better for me because I want to, I need to group this stuff and this stuff together to get the DVV DPs apart. And they are, now they're already separated. So it's a little just going to make my life a little bit easier. All right. Uh, so I can take those two pieces that I've highlighted in yellow, factor the DVDP off. And then this I'm going to write as, I'm going to put that v cubed back in the denominator. And then I'll subtract um, that 1 times v minus nb over and distribute the negative through. All right, what were we trying to, were we trying to show something? No, we just wanted the, just wanted the value. Okay, so like I could let this be as messy as I want it to be, good. So dvdp then is going to be divided by all this junk here. And I'm not going to muck around with like cleaning this up at all, which I could, 
but who cares because it doesn't ask me to do it, it just asks me to find it. So this is like my answer for part A, yuck. Could I have had something better looking than that? Probably. All right. And now for part B, it wants us to use V equal to 10. Um, P equal to 2.5, A equal to 3.592, and B equal to 0 0.04267. So we're just going to plug that junk in and see if we can get it to come out right. All right, alpha y equals, I'm certainly going to want to use the fraction command, and in fact, I'm going to abuse the heck out of it this time. Uh, actually, let's do this. Can I do that? I think I can do that with this calculator still. All right. I'm going to set... Uh, the R, what are you asking about? Um. Oh, it says it's one mole, right, in the problem? Yeah, one mole. N is the, just the number of moles. So N is just one. Because it says one mole of gas, right? Right, it look up one mole. So N is just one. So it doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, so I can just kind of drop those out of there. Oh, no, it's not going to let me do that. Oh, that's what I needed to use. I didn't need to use equal. I need to use stow. Watch this slick stuff. What? OK. You want me to do it the other way, then. Fine. So rather than typing these over and over and over again, I'm going to just store these into the correct variable names, which makes it um, feel like to Mr. Kulik less likely for him to make some stupid error and put the wrong number in the wrong spot. Because now I can like legit just type this the same way it looks like on my sheet of paper. There's the B. All right, now let's do this. This is going to be a little bit neater looking. So negative V, there is the B, plus, well, I'm just going to leave the N's out, right? We established that the N was the same thing as 1. So I'm just going to skip writing those. Where's my P at? There's P plus. And we'll do a fraction inside of a fraction. We have n squared, but I don't need to worry about that. So just have n over. And we have v squared. Where's my v? Nope. Uh, there you are. Squared. Minus math. Do the fraction command, 2 times A over V cubed times V minus N times B. But again, I don't have to worry about the Ns because they're just 1. All right, cross your fingers. Negative 404, that doesn't sound great to me. Oh, good, it is correct, though. Yes. Just check the back of the book. So there's your answer. Notice that I did this like the easiest way possible for me, though, right? Did I worry about simplifying that expression before? No. 
I type into my calculator like the easiest way possible where it's like I'm just going to define the numbers to be the right letter and type it in with the letters exactly like it looks on my sheet of paper so it's like the least likelihood I can screw this up as possible. I want to, you know, this is a good one to show you guys like how clever you can be with your calculator to make this like as error proof as you can because to type this all in with like getting the numbers in the right spots and like not mistyping one of these terrible looking decimals because it's not like they're all just easy numbers like 10 and 2.5. The A and the B are gross, you know. That to me felt pretty slick. I'm pretty proud of myself for thinking of that on the fly. Yeah. The calculus is rough there, right? Especially with all the variables rattling, or the constants rattling around that looked the same as the variables. Although, can you explain one more time, back at the very beginning, I mentioned this, why didn't you take the derivative of the constants? How uh, are you able to pull them out like root? That's just like the derivative of 2x, right? Can you just take the derivative of x and multiply it by 2? Oh, I see. Yep, I see what you're saying. Right? Like, in fact, this was one of the derivative rules that I didn't bother putting in there. You can just pull the constant out front and just take the derivative of the variable parts. Mm -hmm. When it's sense. when it's yeah, multiplicative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Teagues? Uh, is that like a valid test question? Something like this? Yeah. Uh, it's on the borderline of something that I would put in there, but remember, like, well, here, here, here's the thing, like, it's probably, at least with the amount of constants rolling, rattling around there, is probably something I would err against. Uh -huh. um, if it was, like, implicit and then two variables and just everything else was numeric, probably a little bit more likely, uh -huh. like, had we filled in the values for the constants first and then asked you to do it, that feels like a little bit more on par with what I would ask or something I would feel comfortable asking. Um, the constants make it kind of sucky. Yeah. But if they were like, if we had filled in the value for like R and A and N and P and V, nope, not P, but A and B and N and R and V all at the start, like way back here, and then I asked you to take the derivative. Yeah. That I would feel okay with. Because then it just turns into like a normal like Yeah, just yeah. it's just kind of like a normal kind of kind of sucky, but not even that sucky implicit differentiation problem. It's just that all the constants rattling around in there make it kind of obnoxious. Right. Um, but again, like you guys had asked over and over at the beginning part, like when would I use it? Like when does this happen? Like this is like this is something that if you took chemistry you probably remember van der Waals like that was something you would have talked about um, so it's like hey this is something you should at least sound familiar with and like this is something you would legitimately do if you're like a physical chemist Paul sure that was the easiest question I'll get all day ha <laughs> um, others. Well, there's one that I want to do that I think is a good one. Um, this is, uh, what is this, 39 from um, 3.5. So this says, if xy plus e to the y is equal to e, find the value of the second derivative derivative at the point where x is equal to 0. So the first thing I want to do 
is deal with this, the point where x is equal to 0. When I say point, I need a, I need an x and a y to go together. I know the x is 0. Let's find the y. How am I going to find the y? Going to plug 0 in for x to my equation and solve for y. Okay. So I just have e to the y is equal to e to the first. So y should be 1. So my point then is 0, 1. Feel good there? No big deal. Now tricky to come up with that right from the get-go of like, hey, I'm going to have to plug in some values for x and y. Here's my value for x. Where do I get my value for y? Anise. Sure. And this, yes? Well, if I have e to the y equals e to the first, y just has to be 1, has to be the exponent. Right? Or you could take the natural log of both sides if you want to. That's fine. Does the same thing. But that was one that you could just look at by inspection and be like, ah, y's got to be 1. Okay. Um, so the derivative time, to get the second derivative, we have to start by doing the first derivative. So I take the derivative of both sides. So that's going to distribute on the left side. And what's the derivative of e? Zero. Why? Yeah, E is a constant. Ah, oh, Mr. Kulak. I know. Uh, the derivative of x times y, how do I do that? Product rule. Yeah, so that's going to be x times the derivative of y plus y times the derivative of x. Okay. And then to do the derivative of e to the y, how do I do that? That's a chain rule. So the derivative of the outside is e to the y. And the derivative of the inside is? Yeah, I'm going to write it as y prime. But you could call it dy dx. That's OK. Right, it's really 1 times y prime. But I'm not going to bother writing it that. So far, so good? Okay. The derivative of y is? y prime, or just 1 times y prime. The derivative of x is 1, so I'm not going to bother with it. Everybody's OK here? So at this point, we have two choices. We can either take this equation and differentiate this again. Or we can, at this point, get the y prime by itself and then differentiate. Either is OK. Um, sixth hour, I left it the way it was and differentiate. I think this time, I'm going to get the y prime by itself and then differentiate to see if one way is really any easier than the other. Um, I think that this way is going to end up being the better way. But we'll see. So I'm going to subtract that regular y over and then factor the y prime off of the pieces that remain and then divide by x plus e to the y. Oh, yeah, thank you. Everybody's good with that? Okay. Take the derivative of both sides. Well, it's actually, I'm going to rewrite that because I'm going to do something with that in a minute. So take the derivative of both sides now. The derivative of y prime is y double prime. And to take the other derivative, I need to use quotient rule. So the denominator times the derivative 
of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared Uh, the derivative of negative y is uh, the derivative of negative y. We're looking at this piece right here. Negative y prime. Very good. And then I'm going to just minus the negative there and make that a plus. Uh, the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of e to the y is e to the y times y prime. We did that already. At this point, I'm stopping the calculus, because remember, this problem is asking for a specific value. right? It wants it evaluated when x is uh, 0 and y is 1. So the first derivative evaluated at that is negative 1 over <coughs> e plus you. So when I evaluate this at that values at 0 plus e to the first times negative negative 1 over e plus 1 times 1 plus e to the first times negative 1 over e all over 0 plus e to the first squared. Everybody okay there? Okay. Uh, e times negative 1 over e is just going to be negative 1. And 1 minus negative 1 is just 0, so that whole piece is just gone there. You okay with that? And then here I have e to the first times negative negative 1 over e. e to the first times 1 over e is just 1. So I have 1 plus 0 on top, or just 1. And at the bottom I have 0 plus e, which is e, and then squared is 1 over e squared, and that's my final answer. I think that was actually easier than what I did when I tried to do the derivative of the equation in the equation form. I think that might have been just a little bit easier. That's a perfectly reasonable test question, I think. Um, Blake? Sure. Okay. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit here about the test. Um, talked a little bit to fifth hour. I think what we're going to do is we're going to actually just do the test three one through three five. I'm going to save three six for the second half. Is that okay with you guys? With the one caveat that from three six, I'd like to include this derivative rule that the derivative of the natural log is 1 over x, so that I can use that in other derivative problems. Is that okay with you guys? Okay. Um, so we're going to do that test on Thursday next week. I think that's the 20th. Is that right? Yes, Thursday next week is the 20th. Does that feel okay? All right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the test format. 
So the first three questions are going to just be ask you to find the derivative. These problems are problems that can be done without having to use a product, chain, or quotient rule. None of those would be necessary, although that would probably means there's going to be some algebra re required to make it not necessary. You could always go ahead and use the, you know, the hammer to, you know, to kill the fly if you need to. But um, those are the first three problems are going to be all things that could be done without having to use those rules. Okay. Um, the next three questions will can be done using only one of product chain quotient. So again, it'll be three more derivative problems that could be done using just one of those three. You know, like problem four could be chain rule problem, problem five could be a product rule problem. Now you might again have to do a little bit of algebra to get it to a form where you can just use one rule instead of two or three where it might look like that initially. Everybody's okay with that? Yeah, Paul? So we're not allowed to use two or three? You, you are, but like time is a factor so and mess is a factor, yeah. right? Like if you can so make the saying, problem shorter, you should make the problem shorter, yeah. right? Like, but I'm letting you know that you may be like, Mr. Kulik, you said this was only a one, pro one property problem. I see like three chain rules going on, or like three product rules going on here. I'd be like, well, that's true right now. Does it have to be that way though? Kind of, you know, like that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. The second to last one there. We'll, we'll get to it in just a second, okay? I'm gonna talk about all of these. So just, just hold your horses. Um, there'll be two questions where I ask you to, again, find the derivative, and you'll need to use two, either product, chain, quotient. So it could be like two products, could be a product and a chain, could be a quotient and a quotient, could be a quotient and a product. You know, like you need to use two of them. Everybody's okay with that? And then one question where you'll you have to use at least three of them. So again, it could be all three of the same one. It could be two of one and one of the other. It could be four of one, right? Like it, it's going to be a nasty boy, though. Um, and then we have one question where I ask you to find the first derivative implicitly. And then using that first derivative, write the equation for a tangent line and normal line. So I'll give you the point that I want the tangent line to or the normal line to. And you'll just use your derivative from the first part to, to figure that out. Or it could be like number 39, where I just give you the x value, and then you have to find the y value to go with it. Is that OK? So you'll have to find the derivative like implicitly. And then I'll ask, I'll give you a point, or at least the x coordinate for a point, and ask you to write the equation for the tangent line to that point or normal line to that point, or to that x value. Um, if I give you just the x value, you'll have to find the y value from the original equation, just like we did in 39. Yes, Sean. So let's just say our equation is like x squared is y squared is equal to uh, derivative is negative x over y. Mm -hmm. um, so if you just gave us the x, you'd have to plug it into the initial equation to find y, mm -hmm. and then you plug both of those into our derivative to find the slope for our tangent line, and then plug those points in for the tangent line, and then use the reciprocal tangent or the reciprocal slope for the normal line mm -hmm. the same points. Negative reciprocal, but yes. Negative. Yep, 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 exactly the same, yep. So again, not a, like really an Algebra 1 problem once you have the slope, right? Um, but again, like classic AP question, writing the equation for a tangent line or normal line, like you need to be able to do it. Uh, and then one question where I ask for the second derivative implicitly at both a point and then in general. So like 39, we found the second derivative at a point, right? What's, what would be the difference if I wanted it in general? 
is that these places where the first derivative was, we'd be plugging this into rather than a number. You have to plug in that whole shimmy shanger. And then that screams of a show question where Mr. Kulik tells you what the answer is supposed to be and you have to simplify down there. I know, Blake. But there won't be a ton of them. There'd be like one or two show questions at most, right? I know that those are time consuming. Um, no logarithmic, no logarithmic differentiation. You only have you have to take the derivative of a log, but we won't ask you to any logarithmic differentiation question. Now, if you feel comfortable using that, you can use it. That's okay. But uh, so again, just like last time, here's some questions that I kind of was looking at when I wrote the test. Um, Here's some nasty boy derivatives that involve like a whole bunch of rules that are probably harder than anything you'd have to deal with on the test. But if you can if you can hang on this and feel like you can walk through that, you should be able to handle whatever I throw at you on the test. Like this first one is, what's that got? That's three chains, a product, and a quotient. You know, this next one is uh, two quotients, two chains, and a product. So you know these are some nasty boys here yeah just for fun for funsies i'll give you that i'll give you the answers here in a little bit i have them worked out i just haven't scanned them into to dump into the one note um what's the last one the last one is three chains a product and a quotient yeah you have just three because it's just e to the x yep so for, um, for the memorization, like I'm looking at the updated one, and so when it's like the derivative of log of a and x equals 1 over x uh, and that's log of a, is that something you expect us to do on this test? Or is that a 3.6 test? Because I, you said that there's like this 1.3.6 concept. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's still the same thing as like the natural log, right? Because if you think about the natural log rule, that's just like the more specific version of that same derivative rule, but I don't think I put anything other than the natural log on there. Okay. Um, so I have that. Is that okay with everybody? And then I got some just general review problems for you that I wrote. So this is like a Mr. Kulik review. Again, I don't have a key for this uh, on here yet, but I have it, I think I have it all written out. I just need to scan it in for you guys. Um, so there's like a whole bunch of derivative rules, problems. These are all mixed together. Some of them are like, you don't need to do anything with it other than a derivative rule with a little bit of algebra. Some of them are like, oh, this is like three products or like, you know, like there's some, some, some bad boys in there too. Um, and then like some, you know, like here's an implicit differentiation problem and I phrase it as to show that, you know, the derivative is this. That like, is that like the kind of problem that we see on the test? Yeah, that would be like the way I would phrase a problem like this where I ask you to like, okay, this one I need you to simplify, right? All these ones up here are done when the calculus is done. Yeah. But this is one where I'm like simplify till you get to this kind of problem. Um, and then I give you the point or whatever and ask you to write the normal and tangent for. Wait, normal's like the... Um perpendicular to the Correct, yeah. So the slope is just negative reciprocal, and yeah. that's all. It's the only difference anyways between the problems. Uh, and here's another implicit one where I ask you to find the second derivative evaluated at zero, and then show that it's this. And that's, this is, that's a nasty, that was nasty. The one on your test wouldn't be that bad. And then 13 was an implicit differentiation problem where I just scrapped it because we're going to do 3, 6. That's the second derivative. That's how you write it with that ddx notation. So now it's x squared. Or is that also That's, well, it's like. That's how the full. Yeah, so if you look at like ddx, 
of d dx that's like d squared dx squared, right? That's just the way, the notation, the way it looks like. But, so, yeah. So after you use one, you can stop? No, it means like you can do that derivative with only one of them. It doesn't mean you have to use only one of them. It just means that it, that's a problem that could be done with only one of them. Like 2, for example, to take the derivative of 2, you would just need the product rule. Yeah. And then you're done. Right? Okay. So on all these problems on this page, um, these are just like you're done when the calculus is done problems. You don't need to worry about simplifying them. Okay? Is that... Yeah. You feel like... Okay. Um, and some of them there's like a lot of stuff going on and some of them it's like oh I can do this without any of the chain product or quotient rules and some of them are like oh I didn't notice that I could have done that without any of the chain product quotient rules that would have been much easier and some of them are like oh uh, this just is a you know kind of a nasty problem that there's not a good way around it So what is the plan for Tuesday? So I just I'm just going to let you ask some questions and okay. stuff because you have, I've given you, you know, I just threw a bunch of problems at you. And yes, I'll get a key up for this stuff yeah. um, today. But, you know, like even with the key, there's probably, there's going to be questions because yeah. some of these are, some of these are hard. And I didn't want to give you just like cream puffs. Yeah. If anything, I'd rather have the review be harder than the stuff that's going to be on the test because I want you to feel like when you get to the test, it's like, okay, this isn't that bad. So, like, just to let you know that there's things on here that'll be longer than some of the things I would put on the test. Um, and that the thing, some of the things on here are just, like, not trivial at all, like, are really... Like that's an involved problem, involves a lot of writing down. There's not like there's no shortcut here. It's just like I gotta really just kind of focus in and hang through this because it's gonna be ten minutes or fifteen minutes or whatever to kind of grind through all the steps here. Um, just looking at number eight, like an after log one, would you have to do a um, product? You do a chain rule. I mean, it, well, it's two product mm -hmm. rules. But to do the derivative of just the natural log of 2x is going to be oh, a chain. chain okay. Yeah, so there's two oh, so products two and there's two chains in that problem. I think we mentioned that in 3 6, the amount of 3 6 that we got through. It's 1 over x. Oh. Oh, it's like those, um, yeah, I remember that. And uh, the derivative of any log is 1 over x, and then in the denominator, times the natural log of the base of the logarithm. Okay. So that's why. When you do the natural log, natural log yeah. it's just the 1 over x times the natural log of e, which is 1. So that's why it's not there. Which is like almost the same rule as the exponential, right? Mm -hmm. Or very similar anyways. Yeah. All right. What do you think? You have it's a lot of, it's going to be a math night. But, 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 Mr. Gulick's given you a lot of stuff here to work with, right? We're pretty, this is pretty specific, what you need to know, right? This is pretty computational, should feel much more close to the math you're used to doing, right? Where it's just like, 
There's a lot of just simplify, symbol pushing math problems. There's not a lot of theory behind what's going on right now. Um, what is this uh, review sheet for? It's not. Oh. You do as much of it as you want. You don't have to finish it. Okay. It's just for you. I made them for you. Use them as how you see fit. If you're like, if you're like, yo, this is just because I'm gonna give you the key with it. So like, the key with steps. You know, like, I mean, do I really want to worry about having you recopy something? I'm, you know, like, you're gonna do it because it's. Prepare preparation yeah, for the yeah, test, so I don't. Do yeah, so I don't need to like check it. There's one less thing for you to have to worry about, like organizing and writing neatly and putting in one. You know, you have enough going on. Um, and with three six being bumped back, what's that mean? Is due this weekend? Nothing. We turned in three five. Three four and three five were due last weekend. Wait, are we able to do the problems for three six? Yeah, we will. We're just going to make it part of the next test. Yeah, no, no. If you've already started them, that's good. You just have a head start then. Um, does everybody? Do you guys feel good about what you need to be working on? I will say again, like. Remember, I made that, that Quizlet for you guys. Do you absolutely have to have all those things memorized? Yes. You better believe it. Like, you got to, you know, like, for example, you better believe you need to know that the derivative of tan inverse is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Like, you've got to have those. Okay, so spend a little bit of time on the Quizlet. Make sure you get those guys down pat because they are going to show up and you cannot finish, you know, you can't do problems if you don't know the derivative rule, right? Like you can't finish it. So made the Quizlet, spend a little bit of time every day. It's not like you need to spend like six hours one day, you know. <laughs> Like spend five minutes or ten minutes a couple times, you know. Get them, get them filed away. Most of them you probably already know, right? But you know, some of these are like, ew, yuck. The inverse ones are the worst because they all kind of look the same. But there's some patterns, so like at least. You know, focus on the pattern, come up with a way to memorize it, to pair the right thing to the right thing. You know, like the derivative of secant and cosecant are like just differ by a negative sign or whatever. You know, I think the same thing for sine and cosine. Oops. Right, they just differ by a negative sign. So like should be easier to memorize because it's not really six things to memorize. It's really just three, and you have to remember which one goes with which. You know, find your little tricks. There's only 20 of them here. The good news is, I think after this, I don't know that there's any more derivative rules. So the next chapter is all applications of derivatives. And then we. Well, that's the second half of this is story problem stuff. And then the next chapter is like all application. So you'll look at optimization problems and like the derivative tests on like how you can figure out how a function is, what a function's behavior is based on the derivative kind of stuff. Um, and then we start anti differentiation. So undoing the derivative. That's called the integral is going backwards. And then that second semester is integrals, anti differentiation. Yep. Looking at how to do that and then the application. Yeah. It's really, you do, there's really only two things in Calc 1 is derivatives and integrals. And it's just like foundation work on those things. 
you want to call count the limit too, maybe call it three things: limit, derivative, and integral. But that's there's just really kind of three big ideas 